Hey there. Um, are you a parent whose child is um, being cyberbullied? Well, maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about, but uh, you need a bit of help um, in this school. Well, you, you've come to the right place. My name's Kai Graham. Um, I'm a parenting coach, and every week I um, release um, a broadcast on YouTube called Teen Toolbox Tuesday and that is because I am author of the Teen Toolbox which is um, a, a book I've written for parents and teenagers and I am also um, I, I've developed an, a free app that you can download also called the Teen Toolbox and it is designed um, it's to, to equip parents and teenagers with the tools for navigating adolescence. So last week I was talking about bullying so traditionally bullying face to face and this week I th I'm talking about cyber bullying which um, I thought was probably um, it, it probably warranted a, a, a little section all on its own um, so I'm going to talk about cyber bullying what is it uh, what your role as a parent can be to help your child um, how to prevent it or if indeed it's happening how to stop it um, so yeah so you've come to the right place so what is cyber bullying Cyberbullying basically is bullying through electronic devices, probably in a nutshell. Um, and it, it, it's sort of there's a there's myriad of uh, areas that that um, are covered on this. That you, you, it's basically bullying to me is an abuse of power. It's when um, one person makes another person feel crappy, or a group of people makes someone feel crappy. Um, and and cyberbullying is no no sort of exception to that. Um, but this, rather than face to face. Uh, rather than it happening in the schoolyard, this is online. This is through, let me see, social networking. Um, and by that, I mean um, sort of applications like Facebook, like Twitter, uh, like WhatsApp, those sort of things. Uh, video sharing, um, which are slightly different, but much the same. Um, video sharing sites, which are like, uh, or, or image sharing, which would be Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. Now, this time of going to print, this is June 2017. Um, if you're looking at this in the future, some of these will be redundant and there'll be other ones taking their place. So it happens so quickly that it's a moving sort of, you know, it's a, the goalposts change the whole time. But those are sort of some of the main ones. Um, other areas, other ways that your child could be bullying is through um, texts, through emails, through chat rooms, um, through FaceTime, which for you and me is sort of video conferencing for kids. Um, but all that, um, it, it's sort of that that is that that is sort of cyberbullying and, and, and that's where it all sort of comes from. The effects are the same as normal bullying. Um, and and I, I I do suggest you go back and look at my previous, I'll put the link in the description, my previous broadcast about bullying. But um, how, how do we know our child's been bullied? Change in attitude, change in uh, maybe mood swings, change in appetite, interrupted sleep patterns, um, isolating themselves, uh, playing hooky from school, um, anger, frustration, you name it. Um, and... One likes to think that you can spot when your child's been bullied, but some people just just don't even see it coming and, and it can be quite disconcerting. So what's the difference between cyberbullying and face-to-face and, and -face bullying? Well, it's, it's the same but different. The real problem with uh, cyberbullying is it doesn't go away. It can happen 24-7. And the problem is, is now that your child has probably got their own, you know, handheld device, be it a phone, an iPad or a laptop or whatever it is, they can be bullied from wherever in the world or even from the guy next door. But also, it, it can be anonymous, which can be really disconcerting. You know, the thing about bullying is you know who's doing it to you. You know, you can spot them in the playground and you think, God, you know, I'll steer clear of them. With cyberbullying, that's not always the case. So imagine walking into a classroom and going, is it them? Are they bullying me? And you might not even know. It could be your friend. 
So it, it can be really disconcerting. Um, so cyberbullying is basically um, bullying your child through these devices by means of a message, an email, a text. Um, it could be a video. It could be a photo. Um, if I think, if, if I talk about sexting for a minute, that is um, a, a, a sharing of a, a sort of a sexual image. So it could be nude or semi-nude, and you, you know, I, I'll go on to how you protect your child. But it, it's amazing how um, how your child can be lulled into a false sense of security and might make choices that. Um, are detrimental to them and it's hard to understand why it happens but believe me it does so let's go to what's your role as a parent how can you protect your child well it's a bit like bullying as a whole keep your lines of communication open go back and, and look at the the previous broadcast because I don't want to repeat everything but keep the lines of communication open be give them guidance and support be non-judgmental. I know it's very tempting to go, you did what? <laughs> but um, if they know that you're going to fly off the handle, that leads to secrecy. And you don't really want that. So try and remain calm at all times. Um, encourage conversation using um, open-ended questions rather than, are you feeling okay? Which is likely just to get a, mm -hmm. um, you know, ask them questions in a way that they have to give you more than a monosyllabic answer. So tell me about your day or the school sort of how to school deal with sort of this issue or that issue. And then, you know, it, it, it opens them up to have a conversation with you really. Um, so that really helps. Um, how do you help as a parent with young kids? I would suggest um, having the computer, you know, they might not yet have, um, uh, uh, their own handheld device, phone, iPad, whatever. So they only use the laptop or your iPad or whatever it is. Make sure it's kept downstairs. Um, that way you can peer over their shoulder and you know what's going on. I mean, there is, the, the, there's, as, yeah, there's, there's so many sort of different things that, that you can do, but that, that's one of the big ones. There's another one which is a, um, a net nanny piece of software which makes sure that they that, that, that your child can't have um, access to websites that are inappropriate. Um, problem is, is when they get a bit older, you, it's harder to um, it's harder to monitor that. So that's why I'm saying keep the lines of communication open because the best thing for your child is knowledge and education so that they are aware of the pitfalls um, you know and pay attention and, and take responsibility of their own safety so um, that'll come in the next section is, is sort of how to prevent it but um, just just keep the lines of communication open what I would say please excuse me I'm getting a bit hoarse what I would say is familiarize yourself with the social media and, and online sites. I have, um, I've, I've many sort of um, clients and parents who say, oh no, I don't really understand Facebook. I mean, you know, I'm a bit of a technophobe. Uh, and my view is, I, I come down hard on this because it's, that's that's absolutely no go. You, you my view is that um, you know as, as, as when your child's growing up, you um, like to know sort of what their homework is. You like to know their school friends. You like to know where they're going. Well, you need to understand the social media stuff. You need to understand what's online. You need to get into their world and understand how WhatsApp work. To understand what FaceTime is. To understand what Snapchat and Instagram are. Because if you don't. You're being irresponsible, let's face it. Sorry, but that's the way it is. So even if it's sort of sitting down with your child for 10 minutes a night going, ooh, can you show me how this works? Because I don't know. Because especially when they're younger, 
um, to, 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 to prove that they know something that mum or dad doesn't. How cool is that? So, yeah, but, but I would say you need to know you need to know how these things work. You need to understand about privacy settings. You need to understand what tagging is and sexting is and all this sort of stuff and grooming and all that stuff because that's your child's world, you know. And when they were three and playing in the playground, you would had eyes at the back of your head and making sure that there was no stranger danger. Well, this is their new playground and you need to be there and you need to understand how it works. Um, so, yeah, one thing I wouldn't say, because lots of people say, oh, my God, I'm just going to ban them using their devices. Good luck with that one. Um, it's, their, it's their oxygen supply. Um, you're just going to build resentment, you're going to build anger, you're going to build lack of trust. So I would say you're just going to have to um, jump on board and, and get used to this is the way your kids communicate, be it with their best mates, um, it, yeah, and whatever. It's, it, it's, it might seem strange to you. Why on earth are you sitting across the road from so-and-so when you could go and chat to them and yet you're online with them for three hours? I get that, but that's the way it works. That's how they communicate nowadays. So you're just going to have to get with the program, mum or dad. That's the way it is, okay? So the question is, how, how do you prevent stuff? How do you prevent things from happening um, in the first place? Right, well, when I was with Childline, there was a, 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 a sort of phrase that they said, think before you share, okay? And really what it is, is if you ask your kid, would you like that message or would you like that photo or would you like that video to be put on a billboard in your town centre? And if they went, oh my God, no, I'd be mortified. Then you should say, don't put it online. But I trust so-and-so or they're my mates. And yeah, that's fine. But how quickly, how often do your children fall out of love or in love or make have a new best friend or can't stand so and so it it's fast and it's an ever moving target and children can be brutal so just remind your child that if they don't want x thrown on a billboard in their town center then they might need to think before sharing this information picture message feelings photo video whatever it is because once it's out there it, it, it's really, really hard to get back. You know, you might share a photo that makes you look silly and, it, you know, sometimes it can just be cross-eyed and everyone laughs at you and other times it can be sexually explicit. But all you need is one person to send it to five friends who send it for, to another five friends who send it to each of those five friends sends it to 25 friends. That means it's gone viral and someone along the line will take a screenshot which means it's saved forever. It's like dropping a pebble into a pond and you just watch the ripples. So it goes out fast. So tell your child, think before they share. That also applies to um, personal information, be it passwords, because a best friend might have their I don't know, Facebook password and they might fall out with their best friend two weeks later and then their best ex-best friend then starts posting stuff that comes from their account but isn't what they sort of say, isn't what they're saying. Does that make sense? And that can be really quite cruel and sending messages to whatever and it, it can be, it can be harsh. So keep your passwords safe, keep phone numbers safe, keep your feelings safe, keep your um, photos and videos safe. I, it, it might appear to be um, over protective and over sensitive, but I've seen the damage that this stuff can do. Yeah. Um, so watch out for social media privacy settings. Um, and your kids might not fully understand this yet, so it is your job to get up to scratch on it. So privacy settings is basically, um, you know, can my child, you know, can their friend see this post or can a 45 year old man wearing his wife fronts in Arizona who's sitting going through chat rooms, can he see it as well? So it's, it's a matter of making sure that the network of people that can see your child's images, feelings, posts, whatever it is, 
is is tailored to what you think is appropriate so think before you share which is quite important um i would also say uh, that you know if if this stuff gets out um there are a number of things you can do um say for example there was a oh i don't know a child one picture of your child being sick at a party now you see for them that's absolutely mortifying at whatever you know oh, especially if they're 14 or something oh my god i just couldn't go but um something like that if if they if they react fast enough you know just by saying to your mate please just take that down because it just you know it, it, it's not funny or it's making me upset so you, you'd be surprised that some mates go all right okay yeah sorry oh that's we've been greeted by my cat um so you'd be surprised how uh yeah that does that does actually have quite an impact um so just maybe ask someone to sort of take stuff down if your child is receiving um horrid messages horrid texts horrid emails the first thing i implore them to do is not to react is to step back and not to fan the flames because we know what but bullies bullies like to um get a reaction they're pressing buttons. So if your child sort of is able to ignore them, I know it's easier said than done, but if your child is able to ignore them, then they might just go and pick on someone else. Yeah? So best just to calm down and not to retaliate. Um, and also things like, you know, oh, well, that, could you possibly just untag that or, you know, whatever. But if it's if it's slightly more sinister, if it's bullying rather than teasing, um, yeah, I, I would just say do not retaliate. What I would suggest is keep a copy of everything that your child receives. Now, I know you might just sort of say, oh, my God, but it's so distressing and I don't want them having that image on their phone. Well, if that's the case forward it to your email forward it to your phone number whatever it is but get all the copies because you might need them in the future and that is a paper trail um it might be distressing for your child to hang on to them that's fine but make sure you do not delete these things because that is information that people might need in the future and you might be able to use in the future if that makes sense um always if your child is feeling vulnerable is feeling bullied is feeling um just out of control in in this situation tell them to always try and find a trusted adult that they can speak to now it might not be you they might feel oh my god my mum's gonna kill me or my dad I, i've just let him down or whatever it is but if they can confide in a trusted adult be it a school counselor be it childline be it um the priest, be it a teacher, be it Uncle Jack, whoever it is, if they can confide in someone, then their their problem is is not just their own. And you know that's the same with bullying, isn't it? Really, um, with social media, there are the the, the social media um, apps are set up themselves to help with this sort of thing. Um, so not only do you sort of, have, sort of have a look at the privacy settings, but also you're able to block people. So if your child is receiving bad messages from be it friends or strangers, they can block that information. They can block anything coming from that user account. Um, so that is really useful. Um, it's sometimes it's bizarre sometimes they don't want to do it because there's that fear of missing out on the other stuff you know a friend might be teasing them one minute but part of a group group chat in the next but that this is your show this is your call but i'm just telling you that there are possibilities that you can block certain accounts um if if your child is receiving um uh, text messages you can block that um you can block that text message or that 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 number sending stuff to your child's phone um that means it stops but it means you can no longer get the um get the evidence that you're looking for so you, that's your shout but it's it's a something that you can do 
Um, and you can also report um, inappropriate behavior, be it on Twitter, be it on YouTube, be it on um, Facebook. All these, all these um, apps have the uh, support facility to report um, cyberbullying. So that, that's worth um, having a look at. Um, I would suggest that if your child is getting email, well, regardless, if your child's getting stuff that they unwarranted, um, unsolicited stuff that they don't want, tell them that they have the opportunity to change their email address, to change their mobile number, to change um, their Facebook account so that they can start afresh and don't get all this this horridness coming through. Now, some kids go, oh my God, but how are my friends are going to be able to contact me? Well, it just depends how serious it is, doesn't it? You know, if, 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 if their personal safety or their mental health is at risk, then you need to do something fairly radical. Um, but that, you know, but, but there is that facility to, for, for you to, to sort of, um, you know, to do something about it. There's something in the UK called CEOP, which is C-E-O-P, which is called, let me read this, Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre, which allows your child to request stuff to be taken down from the internet. Now, like any big machine, this can take a while. Um, so it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but it is a way of escalating things to the powers that be, to the authorities. And if you have had the need to um, speak to and involve the police in this situation, they will go down that route to, to sort of speak to uh, those at CEOP to see, um, you know, sort of how, how this uh, information or this material can be removed from the internet. Um, so, yeah, so there are, I'm sure... You know, every country has has their own sort of um, their, their own guidelines and their own body that, that, that protect you from that. But um, that, yeah, that's a way of protecting your child um, from just, yeah, fr fr from from sort of strangers or, or even friends, you know. Uh, and the problem is, as I said earlier, cyberbullying is is 24 seven. And the fact that it can sometimes be anonymous invariably it is is so disconcerting and so it can be really upsetting so um it's it's your role as a parent to get involved to offer support to um avoid judgment to remain calm and alert those authorities that you think need alerting the school have an anti-bullying policy they will be there to help you and protect your child but it is in the first instance, it's up to you and your child to protect yourselves. And that is to, just to make sure that you are not vulnerable, um, that you are password protected, that your privacy settings are OK. Um, and that the big one is just think before you share. Yeah, because I've seen in child lines so many young kids going, I've just shared a semi nude photo of myself. And I went, right. And they didn't even know the person they were sending it to. And that's what I mean. It can be hard for an adult to understand how on earth would a ch my, my rational child do something so silly. But when children are vulnerable and they're new to the internet and they feel that this hot guy is who's 16 really thinks they're cute and hot, then they feel either pressurised or pulled in or whatever. And it could be that skanky old 45 year old in Arizona sitting in his wife fronts and that's what kids don't understand um, just make sure that who your child is speaking to is actually who they think it is because if it's not that's that's when they can get into trouble but anyway I hope I hope that helps um, I shall what I shall do is um, I will put a link in the description about um, uh, uh, about the previous bullying um, broadcast that I did on Teen Toolbox Tuesday last week, but also I shall um, I shall put up a, a PDF and and um, you can download that later from my app Teen Toolbox. Um, I'll also put the link to the PDF in um, in the description as well. 
Um, if you found this use useful, please share it, please comment on it. Um, and also, I, I'm not sure, I can't even remember which side it is, but please subscribe to my channel because you'll get stuff like this um, every Tuesday, uh, videos that can help you, your, the parents or, or you, the teenager, young person, to just overcome some of the challenges that adolescence has to offer. So on that note, I thank you and um, I'll catch you next Tuesday. Thanks so much. Bye bye.